Hello everyone, in this video we'll be creating a Aurora Serverless V2 Postgres database. I'll walk you through how to configure it with a reader instance and how to access it via pgadmin. So here we are in the AWS console. I'm just going to go to the RDS section so we can get started creating our database. And that just takes a moment there. Okay, once you're here, go ahead and go to the databases section and we're going to go ahead and click on create database over here in the top right. Okay, and this is just going to launch the wizard for us really quick. Let's just close this top thing to make some more real estate. Perfect. Okay, we are going to be using the standard create here. You can use the easy create one, which defaults a bunch of settings. Um, but I'm going to walk through a bunch of different settings here. So I want to do it with standard. Uh, so we're going to be doing this with Amazon Aurora, of course. And we are going to be using Amazon Aurora Postgres SQL compatible edition. So make sure you click on that. And now we have the option of choosing which database version we want to use of a Postgres. You can see there's a whole bunch of different ones here. Now, a pro tip, if you expand this show filters button and you click on this uh, little button here, show versions that support serverless V2, it's going to automatically filter down the result set. So you can only see the ones that are compatible with serverless V2. Now, you can also uh, do this with serverless V1 if you want. I have a video kind of explaining the difference between these two. And if you want to know which versions are supported for V1, you can click on this button over here, which will launch this section over on the right. And if you scroll down, you can see 10.12, 10.14, 10.18 are supported for V1. But uh, we're not going to be doing that in this case, so I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, so we're going to keep it at version 14.3. Make sure you set this to dev slash tests or else if you leave it on default, it's going to add a bunch of things that you have to pay for, which we don't want in this case. Uh, so we're going to set this to dev slash test. Uh, for DB cluster identifier, this is just um, kind of a, a name to make your life easier to manage this cluster. Uh, so you can set this to whatever you want. We're going to leave it as default. For credential settings, we're going to leave the master username as Postgres and password. I'm just going to set this to password as well. But obviously, you uh, want to use a very unique password here so no one gets into your database. Uh, scrolling down to instance configuration. So this is where we need to change some things. Uh, so we do want to use the serverless DB instance class here. If you want to use provision, you can use these two modes with these two different types of instances. And then we want to use serverless v2. You can see it's the only selectable thing. And when we go to the ACU section, ACUs, if you don't already know, stand for Aurora Capacity Units. And the more ACUs that you have, the more essentially computing power that your serverless instance is going to have. So you can see here, if we have two ACUs, we get approximately four gigabytes of memory. If we get uh, 16 ACUs, it's about 32 gigabytes of memory. Um, so the lowest you can go here is 0.5 ACUs, which is only one gigabyte of memory. Um, but it's not going to necessarily have the best performance. So you may be asking yourself, like, how do I select the right value here for the minimum and the maximum? Um, th that's kind of a tricky question. It depends on how your database is being used. If it's been used in kind of like a steady state pattern, then you want to set your minimum to kind of as close to, to that steady state value as possible after you analyze the usage, of course. Uh, and then you can set your maximum relatively high, but just be careful if you set it too high, then maybe people will kind of script against your database and they can do some really, really large queries that cause a unexpected bill for you here. So don't go um, overboard with maximum. I would uh, start at a reasonable number and then kind of evaluate your usage and raise it if you need to. You can always change this stuff afterwards, so it doesn't really matter. One final thing about ACUs before I uh, get off the topic is that the more ACUs that you have provisioned, the faster that Aurora Serverless can scale up. So if you set the low, lower bound to the minimum, which is 0.5, if you get a massive burst of traffic, it may uh, take a little bit of time to scale up. I'm not sure exactly what the numbers are, but uh, you'll have to experiment with this. Okay, so that's enough of my spiel on ACUs. We're going to leave it as 0.5 min and 4 max. Uh, for availability and durability, we're not going to create the Aurora replica right now. Uh, we may create a read replica later on in the demo, but uh, I'm just going to leave this as default. Do not create the replica. Uh, for virtual private cloud or VPC settings, we're going to leave a lot of this as default. Now, in my case, I'm going to enable public access. What this is going to enable us to do is to access the database directly through PG admin on my home computer. Um, but if you're running this in any kind of production scenario, you do not want to have public access enabled. You want your database to be in a private VPC, ideally. 
And the way that you would need to get access to it for PG admin is that you would need what's called a bastion host or sometimes called a jump box that has access to the internet. And then that host has access to your database and your private subnet. And then you set up uh, port forwarding so that you can uh, use PG admin to access your database um, even though it's in a private subnet. So that's the steps to do that. But I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. Maybe that's for another video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But for this case, we're going to make our lives easy and just select public access. So we're going to have a publicly accessible DNS name uh, that we can connect to later on. Now scrolling down for VPC security group, uh, we don't need to worry about that in this video, but security groups in general are great for kind of locking down who can access your database and what other instances are able to access it. Uh, so you may want to take a look into that. Just expanding additional configs, we're on port 5432. Uh, we're not going to be using Babelfish, which is an authentication thing. Um, now, database authentication options. Now, cool part about Aurora Serverless V2 is that it supports normal password authentication and also password and IAM database authentication. What this means is that you can use IAM credentials to get access to your database. So you don't actually have to use a password anymore. Uh, and what that entails is, granted that you enable this, uh, creating a role in your database um, and then getting a what's called a, a token, which you store kind of as an environment variable. And then when you want to connect to your database, you use that token and that will grant you uh, access to the database. If you want to see how that's done, let me know in the comments section below as well. This is a relatively new feature for serverless v2. Uh, and then for additional, let's just go into here to make sure that we don't have anything we have to pay for. So initial database name, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this demo database and cluster parameter groups. We don't need to worry about that in this video. If you want backups, you can do that. If you want encryption, you can do that too. I'm going to turn off performance insights because if you leave this on, it can cost you something and also enhanced monitoring just because it takes longer to launch the instance if we have all this stuff enabled. Uh, for maintenance, auto version, minor upgrade, that's fine. Maintenance window, we're going to leave that as any time. Um, ideally in production, you want to choose a window, ideally at a time when there's low traffic, but doesn't matter for our case. And then deletion protection, also a good production setting as well. So go ahead and click on create database now, and that is going to create two things. It's going to create the, what is this stuff? It's going to create the cluster itself, which is right here, regional cluster, and that's the name of it right here. And then it's going to create a single instance for us, which is this instance right here. And this is going to act as the reader and the writer. Um, so you can see at this point in time, we're currently in the creating step. Um, I found that this takes like up to 10 minutes to create. So I'm just going to fast forward this really quick and come back once all of this is created. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, guys, we are back. We see that uh, we successfully created the regional cluster right now. It's still creating the database itself. But I wanted to share one thing about the serverless capacity units that I forgot to share previously. And that is like, this is kind of an important thing that I think a lot of people using serverless uh, Aurora don't realize. Um, what serverless units refer to here is vertical scaling of capacity. Now, what that means is in this setup, you only have one database instance. But that one database instance has the ability to scale itself up from one gigabyte to, I believe, four equates to eight gigabytes of memory and the, the corresponding CPU power as well. So this is what's called vertical scaling. And, you, you know, you can set this to be up to 16 ACUs. But ideally, you don't necessarily want to vertically scale all the way up because there's diminishing returns. Like if you have a really, really powerful machine, um, that's more expensive than having maybe like 15 or 16 um, smaller machines that are less powerful, but as a sum are more powerful and cheaper. Uh, so I hope that part made sense. So this refers to vertical scaling. Now, how to achieve horizontal scaling with serverless uh, Aurora is we need to add read replicas. Now, read replicas are essentially just copies of this main writer instance. And um, they only allow read traffic, though. So uh, I'm going to walk you through how to do that later once this is all complete. Let's just check it really quick. And yeah, it's still creating. This update does take a quite, quite a bit of time. Uh, so I'll come back once that's up. We'll create that uh, read replica and then show you how to connect to the database as well. So I'll come back in a minute. Okay, guys, so everything finally finished here. We can see our database instance and our cluster are now in the available state. So we're good to go in terms of connecting to it. 
Uh, so if we click on our cluster here, we can see some details about it. We can see that we have two endpoints. Uh, one, uh, the top entry here is for the writer instance and the bottom entry here is for the reader instance. You can see these have different uh, DNS names here. Um, so one thing that you may want to do is instead of just having one instance that's servicing all your traffic that can vertically scale, uh, you may want to add a read replica. And a read replica is a separate instance that you also need to pay for individually. It shares the same storage and has automatic replication from the writer instance to the read replica. So this is really great for scaling. And then you can set up cu custom endpoints down here where you have one endpoint that points to all of your read replicas. So you can achieve some really, really high scale that way, direct all your read-only queries to that DNS. And then for write queries, you can direct that to your write instance. So that's a really uh, scalable way to set this up. So in order to add that extra read replica, we want to go back to the databases section. We want to, I believe, click on this guy. We're going to go to actions and we're going to click on add reader here. So we're going to click add reader and this should inherit much of the settings that um, we created for our original writer instance during the initial step. I uh, don't know why this is taking so long. There we go. Uh, you can add another uh, identifier here. We can just sit, call this kind of the same thing, database-1-read-only. Um, and same region. We also want it to be serverless. You can make it uh, provision mode if you really want to. Um, again, publicly accessible, so same kind of thing. Password authentication. It's going to have the same root password uh, as the other one you created, and it's going to inherit all the settings here. So we're going to click on Add Reader now. And similarly, this is going to take a really long time to create. But while it's doing that, and you can see it's creating here, now we have two instances, Writer and Reader. Uh, while it is creating, I'm going to show you how to connect to your Writer instance using your PG admin. Um, so let's go back to the cluster to get the endpoint for the writer. And we're going to open up PG Admin. PG Admin is just a tool that you can use to access your database, uh, your Postgres database that is. Uh, you can download it. I think it's pgadmin.com or you can just Google for it. Uh, so let's add a connection here for this. And we're going to go right click on servers, go to create, and we're going to say server. And let's call this, um, this is the writer instance. So I want to name it writer and just paste in that DNS. Make sure you trim any spaces if you have them here. Put in your password, mine was just password, and then go ahead and click on save. And so now we have our writer instance here. Uh, can I expand this? Yes. So you can see we have that demo database, which is what we initially named it in the initial um, creation wizard. So just right click on your database and we wanna to go to query tool. And now let's just try to create a table for us. So I'm just gonna drop in some SQL here. This is basic stuff, create company, uh, create table company. It's got some stuff for it. And we're gonna click on run here. You can see it returned successfully. So we're able to connect and we're able to write to the table. Um, let's actually insert a record as well. This will be useful because we're gonna connect to the reader instance later or the reader DNS. And you're gonna see we're not gonna be able to do this. So uh, we're going to click that and we're gonna click on run. We see it was ran successfully. Let's just do a um, select star from company now. So select star from company and we should see that single record in the database and we do. So we have um, ID of five, Paul, 32, California. Okay, cool. So everything is working correctly here. So let's go back to the console now. You may notice I have a third endpoint here listed at the top of the endpoint section. This isn't used in the video. It was just something I was tinkering around with. And just refresh this. Uh, let's see if this is done. If not, I can explain to you um, auto scaling for read replicas, which is another cool feature that allows you to scale even further. Yeah, so this is still in the creation process. Uh, so let's show you how you would um, add auto scaling for read replicas. So go to the top right where it says actions when you have the cluster selected and you want to add a replica auto scaling. So we want to create a replica auto scaling policy. And what this effectively does is it sets rules for um, based on some some value. So it could be like your CPU utilization or any other type of value there. Uh, you can see we're selecting it here, either average CPU or average connections. And you can basically create this policy that says when this condition is met, add another read replica. And what that will do is it'll distribute load across your cluster. And that's great if any one of your instances have a really high CPU load and they're starting to slow down or just uh, brown out. So this is a really great way to add horizontal scaling to your database cluster. Remember, uh, ACUs, min and max, and Aurora serverless in general 
it's uh, vertical scaling. So this is the counterpart. This is horizontal scaling. Uh, so you can create a policy here. So like, I don't know, auto scaling dash 50. So we're going to make it so that anytime it hits 50% uh, CPU utilization on average across your replicas, um, it's going to add another one. So we're going to set this to 50% here and uh, additional configuration. So scale in uh, how, so these are cooldown periods, like uh, don't scale up and then immediately scale down. It has to wait five minutes. It basically is what the same. Uh, you can enable this or disable this depending on what you're trying to do. Um, then you can set the minimum and maximum of horizontal replicas you want to want to add be careful with this as well like you're paying for each one of these replicas so just be careful uh, and one thing to add as well i think i already mentioned this but the data from your writer instance automatically gets propagated into your read instance um, so the data should be in sync at all times so if you wanted to you can add this policy and you know anytime you get up to 50 percent cpu this will automatically add replicas and then um, yeah th that's how you would do it so actually let's do it i've never actually done it before you can see I can't right now because it's currently adding that read replica or it's doing the modify operation so I guess I can't we're just going to click on cancel right now and cool so we can see now the read only instance is now in available state so I'm just going to copy this guy to my clipboard now one other thing I wanted to mention is that you can also give people access directly to the reader instance because remember if you add like five different ones here this um, DNS can potentially point to any five of them. So if you want to create an instance, maybe for like a specific team or a specific project, maybe it's for like, I don't know, a data dump that they need to do, you can go into the instance and get the endpoint directly. So this is the direct endpoint to just this read-only instance. Um, but we're not going to use that. We're just going to use the DNS, which should give us access um, to the, uh, well, to this one because we only have one. So I guess it doesn't really matter. So let's test this out really quick. We're going to go back to PG admin. Um, I'm going to create, actually, let me close this really quick because this is based off the connection for our writer instance. Yeah, so we have a writer up here. So let's create a new one server and we're going to call this read only. And for connection, we're going to paste that connection in. Password is the same. So in my case, it was just password. I'm going to click on save here. And so now we have this read only instance. So it should have the exact same data that we've inserted into our writer. So let's test that out really quick. So query tool and select star from company and just run this really quick. So you can see it has that record that we created on this writer connection or this writer instance over here. So let's try to insert a record into this database. Now, remember we're on the, the reader instance. So, so ideally this should not work. Let's give it a different ID and a different name. Daniel, sure. And now if we click on um, execute, this should fail with an error. And you see it does here. So error cannot execute insert in a read only transaction. Um, so that works as expected as well. Um, so that's generally how you set this stuff up. If you want to clean this up, so you want to kind of remove this stuff, you can just go to actions and then delete. Uh, you just type in delete me here. You have to do this for both instances and then it will delete the cluster as well. Uh, so delete the other instance as well. So delete me and you should be good to go after that. So you can see after a moment, these should both say they are in deleting. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think and check out these other ones on Aurora on the side. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.